good afternoon. My name is Kleber Angelo. I work as a global product manager for outdoor products for medium voltage. And today we want to talk to you about the smart grid offering and the products that we have that fit to the offering. Okay, so we are going to be talking about the reclosers, uh, product solutions for underground distribution systems. We are talking a little bit about the integration of those products. And we are, when we are talking about smart grid, we are thinking always about reliability, increasing safety, lowering the cost of maintenance of those products. So I want to show our medium voltage offering for those solutions to solve the, those challenges that smart grid presents to us. So we're going to be talking about the grid shield recloser, the Reliopad recloser, auto link section analyzer. Grid shield recloser. This is the state of art of a recloser. So the main functionality of the recloser is to protect the line against temporary faults. So the grid shield recloser is composed about two major components, the high voltage unit and the control cabinet. The good thing about the recloser is because it's a key component for the smart grid. The reason why is because the recloser can be utilized as a recloser, a sectionalizer, or as automated switch. It's just a matter to program the unit to behave in that way. When you talk about the smart grid, that is, uh, that is a really good option because you can have the one single device be applicable in different points of the grid and that is going to reduce the time that you need to spend to train the people on that device. So you are saving money with that technology. What some features that this recloser brings that aligns to the message uh, with, uh, of the smart grid? First of all, you have the high voltage unit that there is no maintenance, so you don't ever need to touch the high voltage unit. There is no electronics device built inside of our high voltage unit. What that means to the utilities? Why that is important? That is important because every time that the recloser is installed in the feeder, after some time, you don't have the proper protection. Let's say the surge arrestor blows or you have no proper grounding. Somebody went there, went, walked to the pole, is to the grounding connectors. So those electronics are exposed to any over voltage situation. Let us say there is a lightning strike hitting the line. That comes to the electronics and damage the cards. Whenever you have the electronics in the high voltage compartment of the recloser, what do you need to do? You need the line man needs to go into the buckle truck, dress up, bypass the unit to service the high voltage uh, unit of the recloser. In our case, all the electronic components, they are inside of the control cabinet. So in the same floor level, they can open the door, they can access the control compartment and change those components. So when you think about the safety, you are exposing your, your crew members to less medium voltage, and more, less expose, exposure to the high voltage components, okay? So that is a great feature. It's still a steel cabinet. I won't spend much time talking about the features of the product, but I wanna highlight what solutions that product brings to the smart grid, okay? Another great feature of the recloser is single phase tripping capabilities. Our standard offering you have, the three phase recloser can operate as a single phase device. Why that is important? 80% of the faults of the utility is one phase to the ground. Why would you penalize your customers, they have their transformers plugged in the other two phases, not affected to the fault with the reclosing sequences? Try to burn a temporary fault that is one phase to the ground. So with this standard offering, you can go there, reclose only the fault of the phase, and if you are concerned about the three phase loads, you go for a three phase lockout, okay? So that is in the standard recloser. Here is a, a little bit about the values that we talked. So you have no electronics in the high voltage and the value that it brings to the utility. Another great feature, you can see it's a modular design. Those three boxes that you see inside of the high voltage compartment gives the ability of the utility to service this product in the, in the field. When you look for uh, several reclosers, when you have thousands of reclosers in the line, that is a very good feature because you don't need to rely on the manufacturer to service the unit. Something goes wrong with the pole, let's say the crew hits one pole 
and damage one of those insulators when you install the recloser. If you have a spare pole, in our case, you take the four screws out of the corners of the actuator, you unplug the cables, you pop a unit out, pop another pole in, connect the cables back on, unit is ready to operate again. Okay, so the possibility to service the unit in the field is a tremendous advantage to the utility. Let's talk about the control cabinet. So there's two big boxes here. What's the difference? Why ABB gives stainless steel? Those boxes are made by stainless steel. Why you are giving stainless steel for the customers? Because you can see a lot of empty space here in the top of the box. Why we give stainless steel for free for the customers? Communication capabilities. So nowadays these devices is becoming smarter. You need to integrate those devices into the system and you need to be able to communicate to those devices. You know, back in the days when you're talking about communications, people say, ah, oh, I'll put one radio inside of the recloser. Nowadays, WiMAX, Wi-Fi, GSM, G, uh, GPS, so we have so much other devices that you connect inside of those box, so we create a space that you can install in the same box all the devices that you want to plug in there. Talk a little bit about the brain of the recloser. This is the brain of the recloser, that is the relay. So the, uh, it's part of our rely on family of relays, the RER620. We say this is the most powerful recloser relay in the industry right now. So if you, if you see the challenges that smart grid bring to the utilities is to connect the distributed generation. So how can you connect distributed generation to the feeder? This is the solution right there with the relay. How can, I, how can I improve my fault detection, isolation, and restoration? FDIR schemes, you can use this technology. So this relay has several features that goes directly towards smart grid solutions. So you can apply that relay to do a lot of advanced schemes for your feeder. The relay is a, a part of the Reliant family and we have this draw out case. Whenever you need to change a relay, let's say a situation, it's raining or it's snowing, so you have an issue with the relay. What you wanna do is, you have another backup relay, you program in the office, so you give it to your crew, they drive to the pole, they can open the cabinet, pop out one relay, put another relay in, the problem is solved. They are not, not spending time trying to figure out in the field what happened to that unit. They are not messing up with the cables that are connecting the back of the relay. So they just withdraw the case, plug another relay, unit is ready to operate again. What's the traditional application of the reclosers? Well, you have your substation with your breaker. You're going to have the first recloser here and you can have the lateral recloser. Another normal open point, you can have another recloser. This is the traditional way that utilities apply reclosers into their distribution feeders. The challenge now is, let's make this a little more complicated. Let's, make, let's try to solve customer problems or keep the power flowing in a mesh system. Let's make loops between substations. Let's connect into this grid distributed generation. That is the challenge of the smart grid. Transform a simple feeder like this in a meshed system okay so when you start talking about this this is a, a typical example of a mesh the system a loop scheme so for example let's get the first example that is the traditional way that utilities make fault detection isolation restoration so you have one feeder come out of the station there is a normal point right here and another feeder come out of the station so you have possibilities to switch back and forth between feeders, okay? That is a normal open point. Traditionally, how you can detect that fault? Let's say you have a fault in this point and it's a permanent fault. What's gonna happen? The top recloser here is gonna trip, is gonna isolate the fault, go to the reclosing sequence and keeps, keeps the circuitry open. What happened to this Recloser here is gonna detect that it lost voltage one side of the recloser and it's gonna close back in. So when it closes back, you are power ba powering back the fault. When you power back the fault, what happened? This is a recloser, trips it again. This, go this guy trips it again. This guy senses 
that it was another trip in a reverse power flow, and it trips. So what happens is, the second shot of this recloser, the fault has been isolated. So now you have the situation that everybody that is between these two recloser, they have power back on. The power is restored. So first I detect the fault with this top recloser. I isolate their fault with this loop scheme situation. So, and I restore the power for no affected area of my feeder utilizing this recloser. Very good, right? So this is great. But what's the problems that we have with that scheme? That is the traditional way. That is the way that we do today. Any idea of problems? Well, first one, you put, you put power back into the fault. Let's say, when you close back this recloser, the power back in the fault. So you are doing another momentary interruption for all your customers. Everybody that has the transformers plug here is receiving another momentary interruption. What is another issue that we have here? The protection coordination schemes. Because you are putting additional load into your circuitry and you are losing the coordination depend, depend upon the size of the load you are losing the coordination between all these relays here. So that is another issue. But it's the way that utilities works today. So those are the traditional loop scheme. There is no communications between those relays and they are only isolated fault based on the power and the location of the fault. Now let's go to the future. Let's say that you purchase a product that has the IEC 61850 protocol communication capabilities and the goods messaging communication capabilities. So now those units can talk to each other. So same scenario, two, sub, two feeders coming out of the station. So you have a normal open point here and you have the fault into the same location. Same scenario, that recloser goes there, clears the fault. Everybody loses power until this point. However, that recloser broadcast a message. So broadcast a message say, I went to a fault and I tripped. Then this recloser here is going to receive the message and say, hey, the guy upstream tripped and I lose voltage. I'm ready to close. That, in that moment, this recloser, he, it broadcast a message. That recloser receives that message and say, hey, the fault is upstream because the top device broadcast a message, the midpoint recloser broadcast another message, I get a trip, and it trips. So the faults are already isolated. So what happens after this guy trips, broadcast another message, this guy here close back in. Everybody has power restored. It seems a lot processing, but in the traditional way, that operation can take to up to five minutes to happen to detect the fault, isolate, and rest restore the health portion of the feeder. In this scheme here is seconds. All this transfer of messaging throughout communications, this can take seconds. So you have much more reliable power that you are delivering to your customers because this portion of the feeder is back on uh, and you're supplying power. So um, the ABB grid should recloser has the both both ways embedded inside of the controller. So you can do the traditional loop scheme and you can do the advanced loop scheme uh, using the 61A50 protocol. Every time that you connect to the system, you wanna make sure the voltages are at the same level, the frequencies are at the same level, otherwise you're gonna have a short circuit condition if they are not synced. So what you need to make sure they are equal in both sides here. How the utilities works today? Make sure they are synced. Basically, you have a SCADA operator that has the information from their substation one side and it has the information from the distributor generation the other side. Whenever those numbers match, he go send a command for these switches to close. And then you have distributor generation coming into the feeder. Another problem is, every time that switch closes, you have a big inrush current flowing through the circuitry. The, the traditional relay protections 
cannot detect that in rush current coming through the system. So what, what's going to happen? Those relays or your substation may trip, may open, because it's going to understand that it's a fault condition. So what, uh, how do utilities solve the problem today? They take off out of the, take out the protections. So whenever the voltage and current, uh, voltage and frequency is synced, they take out the protection out of the substation relays and out of the feeder. That is a big deal. That can be a potential issue because if a fault happens at the moment, you are out of protection. You can burn the power transformer, or you can kick it out. Kick, kick, oh, sorry. You can open the substation, the transmission line breaker out of the station. So it's a big issue. With this new offering, with the RDR620, what you can do? You can do that scheme automatically. So you do not rely on the operator, SCADA operator, operator to do that. And also, inside of the box, that uh, algorithm that was developed by ABB, seven years of research to develop algorithm. ABB found out that every time that you close a transformer in the line, there is a signature into the power. So you can say the second harmonic, and you, you start watching the second harmonic, so you can detect when is a fault condition versus when is a big transformer coming to the line. So you can differentiate both things. So with that kind of relay now, you can differenti differentiate when is in rush current coming from a transformer that is being connected to the line versus a fault condition. So now you can sync and also you can close the distribution generation without taking out the protection from your substations. So that is a lot of efficiency that you bring to the system. So besides you have all the sync shack protections, you also have the possibility to close a distributor generation into the grid. You guys can see how much problems we are solving with this new generation of a recloser. It's a very powerful, intelligent device, okay? So we talk a little bit about the rush detection and the value that that brings to, to the utilities. The IC61850 protocol. Why there is such a big buzzword right now about this protocol? Even though we we'll, would love the utilities to purchase all the devices from ABB, we know that is not the reality. So we are going to um, open platform, open protocol platform that is going to enable us to talk between devices from different manufacturers. Of course, if they run their capabilities in an open protocol structure. So let's say in the same scheme here, you have not only ABB devices, but you have an other manufacturer that talks 61A50 uh, open uh, protocol. You still can do your automation of the line using the 61A50. So that is a better solution than a proprietary type of protocols. That box that uh, uh, the relay controller, the RDR620, is a very powerful box. The protection engineer is gonna love this device because when you look in the, the quantity of tools that you have available to play with the device, you can configure all the protection functionalities. Everything inside of the relay is a, a function block with inputs and outputs. So you can play with this. Things. So you can connect one output of one function as an input of the next function. So it's those function blocks. And the tool allows you to draw the wiring and actually you are not doing any physical wiring, but you are doing physical logic wiring and you have those uh, functions uh, and also you can play a lot with those logics. So it's a very flexible box in terms of functionalities and uh, different schemes that you want to implement inside of the controller. Web HMI, okay? Here, there is a lot of value to the utilities. Think about the crew whenever they need to service the feeders. Usually they need to carry a laptop loaded with softwares. A lot of different manufacturer softwares, a lot of different, uh, different devices softwares. So they need to make sure that they have the latest version, that the software doesn't crash, all, all kind of different problems when they need to connect to the devices. 
we come up with the WebHMI solution. What that means? In the front port of the relay, in the RJ45, you have a web server. So if the crew comes with a computer with the Internet Explorer, for example, just plug the computer to the, the, the port, you are going to have all the possibilities to access the unit. So you can check uh, all the information, all the information records, you can download the records, you can set up the unit, and you don't need any software loaded into your computer. So that makes the, the, the people that is touching those units in the field much simpler, much easy. Let's talk about another nice functionality that we have in that box. High impedance fault detection, okay? So that is, is very important because that is concerned about the safety. What happens to a, a line that is very extremely long when a conductor hits to the floor? Most likely, the protections will not operate it because of the distance of the line is going to see it as a high impedance fault. In that situation, you're going to have there uh, a, a, a cable that is energized making glasses on the street. So you're going to see all this energy being dissipated by a cable, but uh, the protection won't pick it up. That is a very dangerous situation because you have people around those cables. You can have those cables into the water, energizing the uh, uh, water. So we have several reports on the news that people get killed by those cables uh, on the streets. So we developed this high impedance fault detection. Again, we can look into the waveform and figure out what's the distortion caused when a cable is down towards the end of the line. So we can actually trip the units. So we are going to avoid people get killed. You are going to avoid fires. So like, for example, the big fires in California that you see, some of them is caused by down conductors that is not doesn't get de-energized. So this is a very important feature that is also a standard in our new recloser solution. That is very important. Now let's switch gears. Let's talk a little bit about underground distribution systems. So when you talk about overhead lines, uh, we have these great features of the recloser that we discussed until now. Now talk a, talk a little bit about the different product that is the ReliaPad. That is now automated pad mounted circuit breaker. It's gonna bring to you all the same nice functionalities that we discussed here, but for underground distribution system. It's our first product into the direction, into the automation of underground distribution system. So you can have communications, you can have all the same nice functionalities that recloser can offer to you on the overhead line for underground distribution system. It is an air insulated, air insulated device. So inside of the box, what do you have? You have the recloser. It's a self-powered box. Whenever you walk on the streets, you see these big green, uh, green boxes. Sometimes you see a little box besides that green box. Power supply is a pad mounted transformer that is supplying power to the big box, okay? What we did with this design? We eliminate the need of the little pad, the little box to power supply to the unit and we embed the transformer inside of the container of the unit. Another, another good thing about this solution is, is a dead front design. Why that is important? Safety. Safety of the people operating the unit. So our pad mount reclosers or we call pad mount circuit breaker, it is a dead front design. Also you have two load brake switches. Why you have the two load brake switches there? Somebody needs to work and service the unit, you can, besides stripping the, the breaker, you can open the switches and you can see the blades through a big window from the panel. So you have this big window, you can see the blades opened. Okay, so air insulated device, so we eliminate oil or SF6 from inside of the box. So it's a very friendly, uh, environmental friendly type of device. So you can have single phase tripping capability for underground distribution system. So you have a full blown relay. 
So you have all the protections, oscillography, records, everything that you, you have on, for overhead line now available here. Voltage sensing, current sensors, all embedded inside of the device. Auto link, six channelizer. Remember, this is, we are talking here about the three products that can make your life much easier uh, and make your smart grid solution, smart grid much more efficient, okay? The auto link is a three phase sectionalizer. What is the beauty of the auto link? Let's say you start plugging several reclosers in your line and any protection engineer knows the challenges of keeping the coordination between the breakers, reclosers, and fuses. The beauty of the auto link is you can plug in the fuse cutout, standard fuse cutouts, and you don't need to, to be concerned about the coordination. So you can sectionalize the line uh, it's a resettable device, so you don't need to change after a fault. You just reset the product and you put it back in. So the function of the auto link is very important. It's a complementary solution for the whole smart grid offering. And how it works? Well, let's say I have a fault here in phase B, okay? So the recloser device, upstream device, is going to pick up the fault. It's going to do the reclosing sequence but the default is downstream of the auto link. So it's, what is gonna happen after two shots, you can program, of course, the unit, could be two, could be three, but after two shots, the auto link is gonna open. So when auto link opens, you isolate the fault portion of the feeder. So what you can happen, what is gonna happen, the reclosing, the third or the fourth shot, close back in, there is no fault in the line, the power is restored, okay? So it's a very complementary to the recloser line. So they work together to improve the reliability of the feeder. Let's talk a little bit about our CON600. So this is all the devices that we have for smart grid, right? So not all of them, some of them, but uh, it's the auto link, it's the recloser. So I would say we are, we are talking here about smart grid solutions for switching devices. ABB, of course, has another product like GridSync that is the pulse of the smart grid for VVOs and uh, for uh, power factor, capacitor banks. We are not talking about those into this class here today. But the CON600 is very interesting concept because the smart grid is going to demand that you can have several tiers of decision making throughout the feeder. How most of the utilities work works today. They have a major system called SCADA system controlling all the devices up to substation level and other utilities and up to the feeder level. However, when the equipment start getting more intelligence, they get smarter, they start trafficking much more information. What potential is going to happen is you're going to clog your SCADA. You are going to overflow your SCADA with data being collected from all those devices. So we have the CON600 that can take a local decision for substation how the feeder should behave. So you have that tier that CON600, you can have the logic for all your feeder, how every single device should behave into different scenario situations. So you don't need the big scale to take those decisions for that portion of the feeder. You can decentralize the brain of your distribution system. Okay, that's why CON600 is very important. So now, when you move into the smart grid era, this is a be beautiful picture, right? So you can see they can become more complex solutions. So you can have SCADA taking care of the substation, right? Because that is one of the most important portions. And then you can have decentralized the brain taking care of the feeder devices. And also the tier three would be the devices taking care of themselves. So they can talk to each other, peer-to-peer -peer communication, IC61850 protocols. They can decide what to do between the device level. So then report status back for the CON600. Based on that status, it can take different decisions. Why this is so important now? 
This is very important because now we can connect distributed generation to the system. You can see what the demand are from those feeders and you can decide where to route your load through different substations depend of the availability of those power transformers or your energy flow. So this becoming much more interesting. So the grid become much more exciting because now you can have decisions being made into the product level, decisions being made with decentralized brains and decisions being made by the SCADA system. Okay, so that's, that's the beauty of the smart grid. We have solutions that goes from Distributed generation goes throughout the, the complete chain. So you can see distributed generation being connected to the, the grid for underground applications. So you have the industrial parks. So we can supply power from industrial parks. We can connect all those devices together. So the smart grid, uh, I, would, I would say ABB is one-stop shop for solutions for smart grid. We have all these products into the medium voltage portfolio, they can really improve the reliability, can make it safer to operate, reduce the maintenance costs, and can integrate intelligence throughout the grid. So I thank you very much for your time, and I hope to see you next time. Thank you.